All right, so it's time to move on uh, to the session uh, to show you how you can retrieve the coefficients from the segments that CCDC has uh, found and detected. I'm going to switch this to the satellite view. I just turned all of my layers off uh, before I can start explaining what's happening in the script. So this is going to look very similar to the previous one where we define a path to the palettes to show the images and we define where results are, we load them into the map and we print, uh, the pr pr print them in the console. After that, what we're going to do is that we're going to define um, when we want to visualize um, or for when do we want to visualize the segments. And so I'm going to load here two layers, one which is the start of a segment and the end of the segment. And so I'm going to click on these two layers and I'm going to use the inspector to give you an idea of how this is really working. And so I'm going to click in one of these places over here. Um, let's say right here. And so if we look at the inspector and we look at these layers that we're loading into the map, which are segment start and segment end, this is what you're going to see, right? So start is going to contain all the dates of the start of the segments and end is going to contain all the end times of all of the segments. And so for this particular place where I clicked, Let's say the first segment starts in 2000 and it ends in 2003. Second starts in 2005 and ends in 2010. And third starts in 2010 and um, ends in 2012. And the last one starts in 2012 and ends in 2019. So this place has four segments. But if I click somewhere else, you're going to see that for this particular segment, which is stable forest, segment starts in 2000 and it ends in 2019. If I click somewhere else, you're going to see that this one, instead of one or three or four, has three different segments. So I hope that you see that by now that what this means is that these arrays are of variable length. That means that any given place, you're going to have a different number of uh, data in each of the pixels. Some pixels are going to have one segment, some pixels are going to have three, some pixels are going to have 15, and that's that's possible. And so that means that if you want to visualize the coefficients for any given segment, we need to uh, filter them by date. And that's what we're doing right here. So we're telling it we are targeting this date, so the midpoint of 2005, that's our target date. And I want you to, uh, I want to find the segment that corresponds to that time. So this is gonna be um, a way to index our data. So we're telling it, look in the band that has the start dates and find the dates or the places that are less than or equal to our target date and that have an end time greater than our target date. And so this is what's here in this select segment, um, identify segment uh, layer. And so, if I look at it on the inspector, you see that for this particular place that has three segments, it's the first segment that meets that condition. If I click out here in the forest, 
and I look at this information again, there's only one segment. So of course, it's to the first segment that meets that condition. If I click somewhere else, um, there's two segments. And this is telling me uh, none of these actually meet the condition. And this is because this segment starts in 2003 and ends in uh, starting 2000 and ends in 2003. And this one starts in 2006 and ends in 2019. So we're requesting 2005, which is not intersecting any segment. And therefore, the mask that we're trying to get is not, not seeing that. And this is entirely possible because the segments don't always match perfectly. Sometimes there's gaps between segments. And so this is simply something that could happen. But all of this is to say that we are using this uh, band called that we're calling identified segment as a way to know which segment we need to reach retrieve. And so now we need to select which of the coefficients uh, or, or which of the, the spectral bands that we use we want to look at. So again, we're getting the swear band, and I'm telling it from the CCDC results. Uh, retrieve the, C, the coefficients for the first short wave infrared band, and I'm adding them to the map. And uh, I'm going to get back to that in a second. And then with this mask that I created recently, this, this one called identify segment, remember that that's telling us where the segment that we want is. So we are going to retrieve um, which, in which of these positions the maximum value is. So in this case, uh, this is telling us that the segment that we want is the first one. So when we tell it in which position do we have the maximum value of this column, the maximum value is one. And so the position of that maximum value is also one. And so that's what's going on here in this line. That's going to give us an array that then we flatten to get um, this index that we're going to use to slide the coefficients. After that, we are creating this a uh, variable called slice end, because in order to slice, we need to tell it when to start and when to end. And so I'm basically telling it just slice on the next available, uh, available position in that array. And I am retrieving the very, uh, the coefficients for uh, the short wave infrared. I'm going to load them here. Right here. And so what we did here was essentially this. This particular segment has, uh, this particular pixel has four segments, right? We determined that the one that we wanted was the first. When we look at the coefficients for that pixel, you see that there's four uh, groups. So these are all of the coefficients for each of the segments. And we determined that we wanted this one, which was the first one. And so that's what we're obtaining here with the selected three coefs. We're obtaining the coefficients that we want. Uh, and so this is a whole list of all the coefficients that CCDC is producing, including uh, the slope, the intercept, and all the harmonic terms. And so uh, that's going to be right here. So this will be um, the intercept, slope, first harmonic pair, second harmonic pair, and third harmonic pair. And so what this line is doing here is that for this coefficients that we have here for this list of eight, I'm going to slice it 
over the first dimension, which is along here. And I'm getting the first element. And then I'm going to project that to be able to load that as a regular image. And then with that, we flatten that. And that is what we load into the map. And so all of this process to be able to uh, obtain this layer. And so what's happening here? We define these visualization parameters with this palette that we loaded from here. And we're telling it uh, use these two values as the min and the maximum. And I'm going to zoom, in, zoom out a little bit. And this is what you should be able to see right now. And so if I click out here where we have forest, and we're looking at the, at the intercept layer, um, it's uh, better. So if I go back to my time series right here, um, this yellow segment that you see here corresponds to stable forest. Most stable forests in this area, if you extend this line all the way to the y-axis, you see that's going to be more or less close to 0 0.15 or 0 0.14. So most forests have uh, that kind of reflectance that will be the intercept. And so that's what you're seeing here when you use the inspector. When you look at the intercepts of uh, where you see deforestation or a conversion, you see that they're going to be very different from that. And so the intercept is basically telling us a lot of um, kind of the average reflectance for that particular location. And if you look at this in the different spectral bands, then uh, you can get a better understanding of uh, how things are changing over time or how things are looking over time. And it's uh, sort of an equivalent of, instead of creating composite images, you can use the result of TTT to retrieve this information from the coefficients and um, visualize it in this way. And so uh, before I finish the chapter, uh, or before I finish this checkpoint, I want you to see that what we've done here is a lot of array operations, right? We need to take uh, this band of coefficients, and you have eight coefficients in one dimension, and you have the um, depth of the segments in the other dimension. And that can be a little tricky to understand and to wrap your head around at times. And so this is uh, this requires a lot of playing around to understand how you need to index an array, how you need to extract information from an array uh, to know where your segment starts, when your segment ends, which segment you want to use. And um, what we're going to see in the next checkpoint is what happens if we don't need to do that? What happens if we can just use a function that does this in an easier way for us. So I'm going to take a minute and we're going to stop here and then we're going to move on to the last checkpoint of this chapter.